I V M. As someone who just wants to start his journey into investing in stocks, you know, I mean, mutual funds is of course a different area. I don't yeah. want to go into that. You'll probably, you know, meet an advisor or distributor to do even so. But if I'm someone who wants to start there, how do I do it? You know, okay, I'm excited about India and bits and pieces. I, if I'm excited, then I want to go domestic. I want to focus on companies that are focused on the growth story in India. Walk me through this. You know, how would you? advise this person to build a portfolio of let's say 10 stocks or 15 stocks on right. timeline how would that work got it so uh, so i i heard you mentioning that you know you would like to invest in growth stock right yep 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 like okay. so essentially uh, one is your past growth performance which is you know your five five years uh, cagers or your 10 year cagers right uh, but on trendline we also have a uh, uh, an amazing feature which is called a forecast Right, and so what it does is that it looks at all the analyst estimates, uh, and we have the largest set of analyst estimates being fed into Trendline. We also have uh, many of those reports available, and so what it does is uh, it combines data from all analysts. So let's say you have fifty analysts tracking Infosys, right? Each one of them would have given a revenue guidance, a profit guidance, and a margin guidance. Capex guidance and all those things for interest. Folks, welcome to Paisa Paisa. I'm your Sanupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter, and on today's episode, I'm talking market analytics. After a very long time, my guest Amber Pabreja, founder and CEO Trendline, and we will be talking about market analytics. Whole lot of stuff. So, folks, we've done theory, stock edge, markets mojo like way back in 2019. I haven't done this for quite some time, so it's really good to have another market analytics firm on our show. Those who are wondering what exactly is market analytics, stock market analytics to be precise, we will tell you exactly that. My guest, Amber Prabhuja, founder and CEO, Trend Line. Amber, welcome to Paisa Paisa. Thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. Thank you so much for inviting me, uh, Anupam. Uh, very glad to be here, and hi everyone. Sure, sure. Thanks, Amber. So let's start with what exactly Trendline does. You know, I know what it does. Obviously, I've been through your site. I like the product. Seems to be quite extensive. But for our listeners who don't have any idea what Trendline is, let's start from there. So what Trendline does is uh, essentially it provides uh, a framework for all investors, whether it be. you know fundamental investors or traders or futures and options analysts or mutual fund investors a framework where they can take decisions uh, do their research shortlist stocks mutual funds contracts keep track of them and then use our extensive uh, real time alerting system to make sure that they don't lose an opportunity or uh, you know they get out of the opportunity when things you know head south for So it's a holistic approach to the whole system, uh, and over the last couple of years, we have tried to uh, capture every uh, you know user group that we have, whether it be investors, traders, or even you know uh, people entering the market through the mutual fund route. Okay, Amar, I know that you guys have got a B two B and a B two C. um product we'll talk about the b2c product in a bit but i want to understand the b2b space for market analytics i know that's massive that's you know it's got a bloomberg it's got a reuters it's got a whole lot of other players out out there what is that market like and you have a presence out there don't you so in india yes we have a presence and we're launching in us uk canada so we're launching for nasdaq and nyse uh, lsd and tsx so we'll get to you know sort of uh, Uh, spar with the big big guys over there uh, as far as the entire world is concerned uh, you know it's mostly currently uh, used to be a terminal market p2p so you have the bloomberg terminal you have the icon from you know reuters or affinitive and then you have the incumbents like factset so if you look at the entire market it's about uh, 60 70 billion dollar market uh, revenue uh, worldwide where uh, bloomberg uh, terminal we used to call the shots but gradually what we are seeing is uh, that the market is shifting from the terminal uh, you know view to actually a cloud based which is where uh, you know trend line comes in and so in that sense uh, you know if you look at bloomberg they are also trying to cater 
moving away from the B2B segment, from the terminal market, they've really amped up their game. They've really amped up their uh, presence online as well as, especially, I mean, if you see the number of podcasts they did, that they have started doing. So they are also, uh, you know, capturing that new age uh, cloud-based and the new, new communication methodologies. But the market is extremely big. I mean, uh, uh, Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters, Refinitiv, all these guys are pretty big themselves. Now that we've got that out of the way, I want to understand your retail product. Let's start mm -hmm. with who is the ideal person to use this product, you know, and then we'll try to understand what it offers. Yeah. So I think very early on and, uh, you know, uh, when this question was asked, who's your target audience? And so uh, we used to, uh, at that point of say, uh, uh, you know, that, you know, anybody who goes to money control. Okay, but in the recent past, we have actually uh, uh, figured out that our ideal audience is somebody who's a little more savvy than a usual, uh, you know, pink newspaper reader. Okay, so we are focused entirely uh, on people who are comfortable with technology, who are comfortable uh, with math, who are comfortable with using Excel, and uh, what we have tried to do is to actually cater to this uh, savvy set of users. So if you see, that's why we have not focused that much on mutual funds. Although our product over there is extremely rich, extremely, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, diversified. Uh, but we have largely started focusing on a slightly savvier, uh, uh, you know, uh, set of investors. So that reduces the... Uh, you know, market audience, uh, but then it also helps us focus uh, our energies towards catering to a set of people who really need us the most. Okay, wonderful. So let me understand what's your pitch, right? I mean, because India, <laughs> Indians famously don't like to pay for anything. You've got a paid product. Um, <laughs> what, you know, so how would you pitch that? And you, I mean, you've got investors and you've got traders. Both are very, very distinct groups of people with very distinct requirements so what's your pitch then so our pitch is that uh, we are a platform play so you have products which just do alerting right uh, you have products which just do fno or products which just do you know uh, fundamental analysis right there are other products which just do charting or technical okay trendline does all of this together right so anybody who has an investment in equity will most likely have investments in, you know, your ATCCC mutual fund, right? Uh, at times, they would want to hedge their portfolio when things are not going so well using futures and options. So as far as, uh, you know, uh, the savvy investors are concerned, they have a multi-asset portfolio. And that's where Trendline comes in. Uh, not only do we have these, uh, you know, entire suite of products, these are industry grade products, uh, you know, with our B2B customers, we do close to about 750 million APIs per month. So it's trusted by around 30 brokerages. Uh, and so consequently, what really happens is that uh, not only do people, you know, do their research on Trendline, uh, but our alerting system is uh, one of the best available uh, in India. And so, and so that helps, uh, you know, stickiness. Regarding, uh, you know, people not paying, uh, I think that assessment is more or less <laughs> accurate. Uh, but what we have seen is that it's more of a, and, and I think I, I put myself in that category. So, you know, I, I put myself in, in, in the customer's shoes. Uh, we are all BFM guy, people, Indians, right? And so over a period of time, what has happened is that the value that Trendline generates uh, as we have increased the size of size of features, uh, has increased substantially. And so what we have seen is that in the last couple of years, although our uh, MAUs and your KPIs have been excellent, the growth rate has been uh, really, uh, you know, uh, outstanding. The subscriber growth has actually outpaced all of these because, uh, you know, the product now provides uh, much more value uh, for the money, uh, for the subscription amount. That is one thing uh, from our side because our product has matured. But I also see a gradual change um, in the uh, 
way people are reacting towards it. Um, I think maybe it's because uh, Apple is doing better or, you know, so people are used to subscriptions. Maybe it's Netflix. People are used to paying 199 rupees or Hotstar or whatever it is. So basically, I think all of us are attuned, aligned to the fact that if there is something uh, which is being used every day by them, then they need to pay for it. Uh, what we have also kept uh, very simple is that there are no ads on trending. Okay, so it's very clear to the user that the only way that we are going to generate revenue out of them is through a subscription fee. There is no other means of monetizing our, our, our users except uh, uh, via subscription fee. So I think a combination of these things uh, help, have, has helped us. And I think uh, largely we have been a little more successful uh, than other platforms uh, because of these two or three. In monetizing the user base great how is your growth been i mean in the and when when i say growth i want to i want to understand it from the perspective of what all features have you added right like from, right. You, you started with x and now here we are in 2023 how have you added your various features along the way all right so i think when we started uh, we started with uh, you know uh, a very core data engine uh, which can do when was that sorry which year was that yeah so in 2018 we launched our screener system so i consider oh, so that as the five, five years, years old that's it yeah nice yeah. Yeah, go on sorry please go on yeah so we launched our screener system uh, back in 2018 and when we did that we built a data engine which was capable of ingesting uh disparate fields uh disparate data feeds uh, and working consistently for the front-end user so what this uh, screener system lets you do is it lets you write uh, anything you want to query. So you want to filter stocks, uh, you know, filter stocks by saying, uh, I want to find out stocks which have good growth and which are doing technically well. Okay. And where promoters are buying their stocks or FII's are buying or MFI, MFs are buying. You can write whatever you want and then there's a sale. Okay. It'll generate a list of stocks for you. Right. So that was our first product. And this was catered towards uh, people who wanted to do their own analysis. Uh, in parallel, uh, the co-founder Devi, she came up with an idea that we needed to, uh, you know, reach the masses. And so we launched our superstars, which is, you know, tracking the portfolio of the Junjunwala and the Kacholias of the world, along with, let's say, the Goldman Sachs. And that, that product has uh, been very successful. We have iterated over these products over the last five years. And, uh, you know, we recently launched our screener version three and superstars version three as well. So in the meanwhile, uh, we move towards, uh, you know, again, building that fun uh, for the user. So basically the idea behind Trendline is not just to help you find good stocks, but also help you to avoid making bad decisions. It's, e it's equally important to tell a, tell a customer or an investor saying that this is a bad stock. And so we built this scoring system, which is uh, essentially called durability, valuation, and momentum. Okay. So the durability looks at stuff like uh, how good or bad a stock is from a qualitative perspective, whether it be financials, whether it be buyability, whether it be, you know, your leverage ratios, uh, whether it be, you know, whether uh, FII's or MFs are investing in it. So that tells you whether a stock is good or bad, right? Mm -hmm. Out of 100. You get a range, right? Now, uh, a stock might be excellent, but it's overbought, right? It's trading at the higher end uh, of what it usually trades at. That's where the valuation metric comes in. So it's durability valuation. So the stock is really good, but is it something in a viable range right now compared to its peers, compared to its history? So we have. Uh, a system which lets you say, okay, where are you in this viability zone on a spectrum of 100, right? Uh, now, the stock is really good. Uh, it's fairly valued. But is the market really interested in it? So at that point of time, because you have a limited amount of money uh, and the opportunities over there are quite a few. So you want to catch the right opportunity when everybody else is catching it so that 
you ride the wave that's where the momentum uh, mark, uh, score comes in and the momentum score uh, typically focuses on uh, uh, whether the market is really buying that particular stock so that was the third thing we built subsequently we, we built uh, you know our real time alerting engine which is called alpha alerts email alerts uh, recently we have launched two big products one is the stock reports uh, and the other is a baskets product uh, starfolio uh, which has just been launched uh, so starfolio is something which is bridging the gap so till now people could uh, do research on trendline and they could also track uh, stocks on trendline right okay uh, so they could do screeners but uh, and they could track the result of the screeners once they had it but they couldn't trade uh, uh, so starfolio bridges that gap so what it lets people do is they can buy an entire strategy with a single click on their using their favorite broker so whether it be zero ta right five paisa hotela loswa and then uh, track it uh, basically uh, as a single thought unit so you know you have a strategy or you have a watch list which you made when covid started now that's not the only thing that you're going to buy you already have another portfolio right you want to be able to track that separately Starfolio helps you do that. It helps you transact all fifty stocks at one go, and then track that thought process as a single unit. And then, when the strategy has played out, when the theme has played out, you can exit that particular theme in one shot with a single click. Uh, it, it's it's a very flexible system. Uh, we are onboarding RIAs, RAs uh, who will be launching their baskets on Starfolio. You can follow superstars. You can. replicate chunjun wala's uh, portfolio in market uh, and then also get an alert when it changes so understood sure so that's that's, the, that's been the uh, you know tra- sort of trajectory of the right. product okay amber i want to get into the very exciting topic of stock trading okay first okay. before we go into what trendline does out there i want to get your views okay now you obviously as a product manufacturer as someone who's got an analytical product that you are the you know you'd be the happiest if people trade more and more and more and more but all that apart and we've seen post pandemic the numbers have also gone through the roof in terms of people you know who are trading and of course various workshops some of which turn out to be a little bit dicey also yeah, what are your views on stock trading you know how profitable is it actually for someone who is new to it Wants to start a career to it, you know, and there is all this buzz and noise on social media about stock trading. I want to first understand your own views on stock trading as an activity, as a career, or even as a hobby for people in India. So, as a career, I think it's a viable career. As a hobby or as a side project, I don't think that's not a. It's not a viable uh, activity at all. Uh, I. frankly i mean if you look at the numbers so let's look at the uh, futures and options turnover in india right so if you compare the futures and uh, futures and f- derivatives turnover versus uh, the equity turnover the ratio is above 400 in india the closest so you're saying market, that for every rupee in cash fndo is yes, four times that 400 times 400 times 400 times yes oh, okay i missed a couple of zeros sorry please go on yeah yeah in germany which is the next closest it's 35 times us is close to 10 times so <laughs> okay so this gives you an idea about uh, where we are and it has doubled the ratio has actually doubled over the last one year so it was 250 times last year so and largely uh, my hypothesis is that you know uh, the government has been uh, sort of contracting the gambling market and that has let loose a uh, you know a certain set of people who enjoy this uh, you know to get the jollies out of it uh, but if you look at the numbers i think sabhi just released the numbers uh, back early this year that about 89% of the people who traded in uh, fi22 lost money uh, in the derivatives market and I, i think that's more or less my perception as well Uh, and so that is why uh, the the pr- the products that we have made uh, actually uh, you know help investors realize that this is not the best use of their time uh, i really feel that you know when people invest in stocks uh, they should think of it as if uh, they're owning a part of that company I'm a little more uh, you know sort of uh, old fashioned about these things uh, 
so uh, but as a career uh, somebody if you look at uh, you know companies like renaissance technology which have done so well in us right, over a period of time they have given a cagr returns of uh, 70 plus percent every year uh, for the past 20 25 years but that's at an institutional level uh, and you know uh, they use algorithms to do trading uh, so as a career yes uh, it's something uh, which people can look at it but i think as a hobby uh, that's not really the best use of their time i think that thing would be <laughs> more of a you know uh, eventually give you more than what trading would give you yeah <laughs> Anyway, so what are the products that you've got in trading? That's my first question. And, you know, if I were to ask this in a more user driven way, how can you help me become a better trader? Let's say that I'm doing this full time. I've just started my career. You know, what's right. your what do you have for me out there? Right. So we have a, a very large spectrum of uh, available products. So one is the derivatives product where uh, you know, in the FNO part, we have uh, screener systems, uh, we have your Greeks, OI analysis, uh, the entire gamut basically that, uh, you know, you typically see in a derivatives industry. Uh, what it helps you do is, uh, you know, it helps you uh, find out opportunities very quickly. That's what the product is focused on. Um, on the uh, equity side, on the cash market side, since we built that first, uh, the product is even larger. So we have the largest set of technical parameters available. So typically what happens is uh, if you look at, you know, uh, traders using other products, they do a lot of stuff on the chart, right? So on the chart, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, let me see if it has crossed above a moving average, right? Uh, what our system does is that it'll show you all the 250 technicals in one shot for that particular uh, stock. Mm -hmm. It will also help you. Uh, so when traders trade, they have their favorite, uh, you know, parameters. So they'll be trading on RSI, MFI, right? So what our screener system lets you do is identify a stock which are bullish or bearish on your favorite parameter that you like to trade on, right? Uh, and then once you have selected the companies, uh, you can. Uh, uh, puts alerts on them, whether it be strategy alerts, uh, whether it be individual data point alert. Once you put it in a watch list or portfolio, there is a generic real time alerting system uh, which can monitor all stocks um, in your watch list and portfolio uh, for over 100 uh, parameters at one shot without you doing anything. So you just add it to any of your watch list and it automatically comes under the monitoring system. Hmm. Uh, so, so the idea over here is that, you know, uh, again, the discovery part uh, and the alerting system helps you, uh, you know, sort of time your entry and exits. So I want to understand one thing because I just realized that, so how am I better off? Am I better off, you know, as a person or am I actually agnostic? Whether I am going via my broker, okay, who to whom you're already supplying your product, or am I better off going through you and giving the execution somewhere else? Because I'm, I've, it just struck me that if the broker is using the same package as you're giving them, and therefore to me, as a trader, okay, I'm not talking about the investment part. How would that work? Or is there any difference at all in that? Yeah, that's, that's a, I mean, uh, good question, especially, I mean, uh, comes from a person who, uh, I mean, you know the product well. So uh, essentially to bro brokers, Typically, we have given uh, stuff which is available on Trendline for free. So the alerting system that I'm talking about, uh, most of it is not available to brokers. Okay. Uh, so as far as if you're using your broker, uh, then you can use the research part or the free part of the Trendline, right? Uh, so I mean, in that sense, uh, you know, the brokers uh, are subsidizing the cost of the free users on Trendline, correct? So you, if you want the uh, complicated alerting systems that Trendline provides and, you know, other uh, sort of premium stuff, then you will have to come on Trendline, become a subscriber, and then only trade using your broker. But you can do that on Trendline itself. You don't need to go to your broker. You can execute the trades on Stock. I was just wondering because the thing is that, you know, 
in trading thankfully not in investing in trading timing is everything you know so you've got yeah. an analytics layer i have my strategy i have my method i have whatever way i employ you know it could be macd could be rsi could be moving averages could be anything you know there are and the deeper you go in in trading the more confusing it gets i get i've i've only heard of some very exotic names you know and i hear i'm talking about the and over and above that there's futures and options so someone for whom price moves you know in stock trading is all about getting that arbitrage getting that price difference between uh, uh whatever your your trade is so the analytics and the execution typically it's great if they're together but the thing yeah. is that both require very specific skill sets uh, my broker or whenever i used to try trading back in the day horrendous at timing Right, yeah. because I have to physically call him, or even if I'm on the laptop or on the app, I always lose that time. Because if you're trading in a very liquid um, instrument, that yeah. ten seconds can cost you a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. because horrible. Whereas if I'm going through you and if I'm getting that alert, so I was just trying to understand how um, that works. It's, it's an extremely basic question, but uh, the fact that you're present in both but in different forms is. You have any plans of becoming a broker, by the way? No, not as of now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, that started our mandate. So I think uh, we're looking forward to launching this whole thing in the three new geographies, and then uh, I, I will. I won't say like never, but not okay. in the near term. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the more simpler part. Stuff that I understand. Stuff that you know is a little bit more peaceful for me. What do you have in investing? You spoke about DVM, which was uh, durability, valuation, valuation and, and momentum, momentum right? Yeah. yeah? Yeah. So, can we just, you know, what would be your advice to someone who is investing? How, what would be the best way for him to use your product? Like, should he start with a screener first or anything else? Like, you know, just walk us through setting up an investment strategy. Right. So, I think uh, the investment strategy starts from your uncle telling you which stock to buy. Right. I mean, that's typically, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what happens. So, uh, so yeah. So, so for that, uh, what we have is, you know, on the top of the page, along with the uh, stock, you have three scores: durability, valuation, momentum. Alongside that, you will see our proprietary software, uh, which is, you know, your SWOT analysis, uh, strength, weakness, opportunity threats of every stock, followed by. A, investment checklist which breaks it down into how good the stock is doing financially technically shareholding wise and and so pretty much done in the top half of the page right so this is a good guideline for you whether you need to go deep down into the stock or not right if all three are red there is no point in looking at it the dvm scores or if the spot scores are not favorable or if the checklist score is not favorable there is no point in looking at it uh, you know going deep down uh, I always recommend a top-down approach because uh, you have lesser chances to make uh, to lose money if you're doing a top-down approach. Because what is going to happen is that uh, uh, you know when when things are more good for let's say Cipla, it's going to be good for more or less the entire pharmaceutical sector, uh, you know, sector, right, or the or that industry. And so as long as the industry that you are investing in is doing well. your likelihood of making having made a bad decision uh, is going to be a little less uh, you know like your your losses are going to be a little uh, more limited than what they they would be if you were to choose an unfavorable sector right and so uh, a top down approach helps you sort of uh, limit your risk in, in that and over there we have you know your sector dashboards your relative value uh, metrics available on trendline which can really help you choose the best stocks within a sector and an industry uh, so these are the two things and then coming to the first part of the top down approach uh, since we are talking about investors results are the biggest thing we have the nicest uh, result dashboard uh, which helps you identify which industries are doing well as and when the results are coming it's a real time dashboard and so what it helps you tell is like you know is the alcohol industry declaring better results this season or is it the sugar industry because even if you enter into cyclicals uh, you want to enter early 
right? You don't want to be entering at the fag end of the run. Right? And so the, it, this in this results dashboard will tell you that you know this season out of uh, you know hundred companies in this sector, ten have declared results and all ten have been awesome, right? So now you have ninety additional results yet to be declared. So you can enter the market into those ninety stocks and choose the best of it. So that's that's a simple strategy which has worked uh, well for me. Uh, choose the sector or the industry. Uh, look at the best stocks within that sector or industry, and then look at the DVM scores and then execute uh, your investment. Yeah, I'm just you know as. I had a look at your website and I was like, was, I mean, I haven't done this for a very long time, by the way. I, there, there was a time when I used to do this pretty actively. I was just wondering, you know, it's been this, um, everybody is excited about India and the, from the stock market perspective and hopefully um, in other areas as well. As someone who just wants to start his journey into investing in stocks, you know, I mean, mutual funds is, of course, a different area. I don't yeah. want to go into that. You'll probably, you know, meet an advisor or distributor to do your own. So, but if I'm someone who wants to start there, how do I do it? You know, okay, I'm excited about India and bits and pieces. I'm if I'm excited, then I want to go domestic. I want to focus on companies that are focused on the growth story in India. Walk me through this. You know, how would you advise this person to build a portfolio of, let's say, ten stocks or fifteen stocks? On timeline, right. how would that work? Got it. So, uh, so I, I heard you mentioning that you know you would like to invest in growth stock, right? Yep, yep, yep. Right. So essentially, uh, one is your past growth performance, which is you know your five five years uh, CAGRs or your ten year CAGRs, right? Uh, but on trend line, we also have uh, uh, an amazing feature which is called a forecaster, right? And so what it does is that it looks at all the analyst estimates uh, and we have the largest set of analyst estimates being fed into Trendline. We also have uh, many of those reports available. And so what it does is uh, it combines data from all analysts. So let's say you have 50 analysts tracking Infosys, right? Each one of them would have given a revenue guidance, a profit guidance and a margin guidance capex guidance and all those things for Infosys, right? What the forecaster will tell you is what is the average, what is the median, what is the low estimate, what is the high estimate for growth in revenue and in profit and some seven or eight other metrics, right? So once you have these numbers available, uh, you have the past performance, you have the expected next two years performance, you write a simple screener and the yeah. screeners are really pre-built. Right. That's what so I you mean. enter, yeah. So you go to screeners and you hit growth, and you're going to see four or five screeners, and you choose the one which helps you combine both these things, and it's ready-made. And then once you have looked at the query which is used in the screener, you can copy it, you can edit it, you can fine-tune it for your needs. Yeah. So in and that sense, the, it works well. The 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 filters that I use for the screener are in normal English, right? I mean, I'm not supposed yes, to know coding and all that. I'm <laughs> pretty horrible yeah, at normal that. Normal English, yeah. And yeah. we have the largest set of uh, parameters. We have about 1,600, so the very wow. large set. Okay, I want to understand this. Do you have a model portfolio in, in the sense that I want to test my strategy? Okay, right. and I want to test it for a week or a month or whatever. And then when I decide that, okay, I'm actually, you know, my stuff is actually working, only then will I invest. Can you help me with that? Yes, absolutely. So we have watch lists, we have paper trading portfolios. Uh, uh, you can enter your, you know, entry points, or if you want to just start tracking as of today you just need to add it to your watch list and it starts tracking automatically uh, yeah. so that's all available so you know you really don't have to you also have the uh, capability of you know executing that screener as a start folio but not buying it you've created a start folio and you let it sit right and and then you know uh, what the performance is but even better than that for people who are a little more uh, savvier we have an entire backtesting uh, feature on Trendline. Okay. And so that's very interesting. So typically when you see backtesting elsewhere, uh, the software allows you to backtest a single stock. Okay. So for example, you'll say, I want to buy Nifty when it's at, uh, you know, two month high and then sell when it falls below some particular thing. Tell me what my returns would have. Right. That's what other softwares do. What Trendline does is that it chooses the stock as well as runs this criteria at the same time. So you can say, uh, I will buy 
any company which crosses 30% growth, okay? Uh, and then I will sell it when the growth falls below 30% within, let's say, Nifty 50 company. And run this simulation from 2006 to now and tell me how much money I would have made. And so the simulator is going to run it. Uh, it's going to take about two, three seconds. And it's going to give you a very, very detailed set of results uh, regarding trade sheets, uh, regarding entry points, exit points. So you can just take a look at that data. You can download it in an Excel. Uh, and even before you sort of go ahead and decide that I want to do a growth strategy, because what really happens is growth strategies typically won't work with 50, 100 pounds. They'll only work with, you know, a uh, slightly lesser market cap. Right? Um, so, so you validate this before you even start your journey. Yeah, you know, it's a very good point you've raised because I just, when I look at the last six months, the kind of rally that's happened in mid and small caps, I'm just wondering, you know, for anyone who's listening into this episode and who's obviously wondering that how can I catch the next big trend? Okay. Yeah. What's your view there? You know, is it is it possible to set up any alert system or anything on trend and that can actually help me, you know, to maybe obviously not predict this whole thing, of course, if, if you yeah. can, great. But mm -hmm. is there any way to, you know, to streamline this or is this really a more human process that probably no computer can do no i think uh we, we need to take the human out of it that's the only way to make profit really so uh, as i had suggested you know top down approach choose the best sector set an alert on that on the results dashboard uh, and then uh, go down from there and once you start using the system you'll realize that uh, pretty much everything is alertable so you know uh, it, it's it's a straightforward system once you've spent a few hours on it. Okay. Last question. What are the limitations? What can trendline not do? Okay. I mean, I'm I would love it that you help me to make tons and tons <laughs> of money, but be that as it may, what would you want to tell our listeners that okay, this is stuff that we can't do and um anything on those lines? So on those lines, I think one of the things that no, really, no system can do is to uh, is to give you experience, right? We are not going to be able to short circuit your journey. We are only going to be able to speed it up, right? So you still need to spend, uh, you know, time learning how to invest. Uh, there is no really, you know, there's no shortcut to it, basically. But what we can do is we can, uh, with our simulators, with our research tools, with our alerting system, we can help you learn what you would typically take five years to learn, you know, maybe six months, right? Uh, but what that means is that you need to spend the time. And, and that's where, you know, that 10,000 hours voila thing really comes into play. You probably don't need to spend 10,000 hours, but you'd still have to spend 500 hours to, you know, get better at it. And uh, in that sense, uh, uh, that's what uh, at least our recommendation is start early uh, because if you start early, you don't have uh, too much money to lose. So you'll lose only, you know, your fresher salary or your first year salary. <laughs> so it's, it's a, when you start at, you know, when you, you have 20 years experience, then you tend to lose a lot more money. So yeah. do your learning when you have lesser to lose. That works out well. Nice, sir. I think that that summarizes it well. I, you, who are your partners? I just read somewhere that you've got an investment from IFL. How you know? Is there anybody else on on board, or how do you you know? What's the ownership like? So, uh, Devi and I, we are the co-founders. Uh, we own the majority, say close to about 70 percent, uh, along with the ESOPs. Uh, there is the so IFL fintech fund. That's the fund which is invested in Trendline. Uh, along with, uh, you know, uh, there's a Shangri-La Capital. Uh, it's a private uh, equity uh, firm, which has, uh, you know, about 8% uh, stake in Trump. Sure. Sure. So, so that's the breakup. It's about, you know, 65-70% uh, with the founders and the rest of them. I think there are, there are a couple of listed analytic players on the market also. Right? I mean, there are a few. I've, I'm not sure. That I, I found the IFL name interesting. I you know, I thought that it's via the main brokerage, but it's interesting that it's come via the fintech fund, which yeah. I think has, you know, which probably has a better uh, space on this. Okay. Um, future plans. What are you guys up to? What are you guys working on? What's the next big thing? 
Yeah. So we are very successful in India. We want to take this to. So since the beginning, when we made it, uh, made Trendline, we made sure that everything was made that you know it was plug and play. So we are right now plugging in feeds from NYSE, Nasdaq, Toronto Stock Exchange, and London Stock Exchange. So we're looking forward to launching over there, and uh, that's going to be a nice journey as well, uh, because we know the formula of success in India. Uh, we're going to try and sort of replicate it over there. There'll be some tweaks, uh, you know, required over there. Uh, we have just launched a Starfolio product in India. So uh, from from the launch perspective, it's done. Uh, but from a business perspective, from the you know marketing scaling up perspective, uh, Starfolio is going to be one of the key things that we are going to be focusing on in the next six months. Yeah, these are the two things primarily uh, which is the near term we are looking. For. As a founder, you know what's what do you think you would prefer? I, I see it as a tough choice because in a country like India, we want more people to enter the stock market. But at the same time, it's you know it's very diff- it's like people entering the gym at at the start of every year. You have a lot of entu, but you know that yeah, typically really kind of. Is. What do you think is a better outcome for you? More people joining, or your existing user base spending more time and getting better outcomes using your product? I know hey, you would want both ideally, but I'm just saying that you know big picture, five years down, ten years down, how do you see this market shaping out? Yeah, well, I think uh, it's going to be both for some time. Uh, you know, for us, if you look at the growth numbers, we have just only begun, uh, and that was one of the hypotheses when we started in 2017. Uh, so, you know, that at that at that time we were at about four percent demand coverage. Right now we are at eight, right? So uh, although it has doubled, there's still a long way to go. Uh, so in India, at least for the next five years or even for ten, the growth rate is going to be phenomenal. There are players entering for that reason, like PhonePay, so many other companies, uh, you know, are entering the brokerage market. Uh, so the growth over here in India is sorted out for the next um, five to ten years. Uh, since we have built a, a good platform, it's easy to take it to US, where the paying capacity of users is typically about uh, three to four times. And the current user base, which is uh, able to pay or able to subscribe, is also three to four times. So you're looking at you know nine or about nine to sixteen times of opportunity in US alone, as compared to India. And and the hump to cross it is not very difficult once you've been uh, you know in the market. We know the right people to you know take the feeds from or the you know how to develop it, how to take it to market. So I think uh, that's why uh, the team is now big enough or mature enough to do two things at the same time. Uh, so in that sense, uh, I think we're going to be able to do all three together uh, rather than doing just one. Wonderful. I wish you all the best. And you know, I hope to have the Thank next so conversation much. with you um, in the studio when you've launched your US Europe product. And I wish you Absolutely. and you know your, your team all the very best. And my last question, my standard question to all our guests who come in our podcast is, what are you reading or what content recommendations, if any, do you have for our listeners? So I mostly read uh, fiction. Uh, oh, over there, lovely. I don't get too many people who, who, who read fiction. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please, I want people to read fiction. My God, you know. Yeah. Tell me, please. Go on. Sorry. So I'm reading uh, Trust, uh, which won the Pulitzer last year. And then yes. And it just so happens, usually I stick to science fiction and you know other uh, stuff. Uh, but this one happens to be about a stock market crash in 1920s. So, uh, you know, it's just serendipity. It wasn't a choice I made deliberately. Uh, but I, uh, as far as, uh, you know, nonfiction is concerned, uh, I would recommend two things which I read recently. Uh, one is a 99 person invisible secret city. So uh, that's a book about architecture. Uh, and you know city plannings uh, you know how architecture and how our cities are built affect personal lives uh, so that's that's a really nice book 99% invisible city yeah that's okay it. got it sorry please go on yeah, yeah yeah and then i would recommend something which i read a couple of months back it's called the bomber mafia that's by gladwell uh malcolm gladwell so that book is, to me at least, is about uh, 
to victors writing history books. So you have uh, U.S. Uh, uh, back in uh, you know the Second World War, they started bombing. And I'm not talking about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I'm talking before that. Uh, the number of people who were killed in Japan by carpet bombs was more than the number of lives lost in those two bombs. Wow. Wow, yeah. Okay. And so the, the book really talks about uh, the Nepal culture and how uh, a group of people in the Air Force Department pushed this agenda of carpet bombing uh, Japan and uh, how bad it was, basically. So it's, it's, it's a really, uh, yeah, it's, it's written very well. I really recommend it. Yeah, I mean, that's an eclectic list. So I'm just going to recap that. Uh, help me out here, okay? Number the book number one was Trust by Hernan Diaz. Yes. Okay, I think that's yeah. a classic. Then came yeah. the ninety nine percent invisible city. I just googled that, and the authors are Kerl Colstead and Roman Mars. And the that's third, right. of course, is something you know. It's a pretty popular book, The Bomber Bomber Mafia by Malcolm Gladwell, who yeah. I think you know all of us have read at least one of his books. <laughs> so three book recommendations. They are fantastic, Amber. But you've got you know fiction and nonfiction. So thanks a lot for the recommendation. Good. Yeah, happy to do that. Yeah. And thanks Fantastic. for inviting me. Yeah. yeah, and folks, that is a wrap on this episode of Pesa Pesa. My guest, Amber Pabrejak, founder and CEO, Trendline. Folks, the website, the app, the product, Trendline, T R E N D L Y N E. Amber, thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. Thanks for having me. And listeners, you can check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM Network. You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are IBM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm your host, Anupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter. Thank you, folks. Really, thank you so much for listening to Pesa Pesa. I-V-M.